This guitar fixes several major problems that have plagued Fender Strat since the beginning. <laughs> What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jay. Gotta have the hat forward today because we've got the Bills logo here. Bills won last night, so that's awesome. So what exactly are these major flaws with the Stratocaster? Well, we'll get into that in just a minute, but first let's check this bad boy out. This is the Charvel Pro Mod DK22. If you've been following the channel for a while, you probably know that I've got the DK24 version. This one's a little bit different. Let's get into that right now. So first off, 22, meaning this has only 22 frets. And the pickup configuration here is a little bit different. You've got three single coils. However, it's really not three single coils because as you probably know, this bridge pickup is actually a single coil spaced humbucker. It's a Seymour Duncan Hot Rails. These are Seymour Duncan uh, flat strat pickups. And that pickup is actually reverse round, reverse polarity. <laughs> got here typical stuff for Charvel guys this is not like anything you know revolutionary but this stuff just works it's a great guitar I'll tell you that right off the bat tone knob is that no load tone pot so when you click it all the way to the 10 position it takes it completely out of the circuit which is really nice for those of you that don't use a tone knob or you just want to set it and forget it it's not going anywhere unless you kind of give it a click through that gate to get it back into a uh, usable mode uh, the volume knob is a low friction EVH Bourne's low friction pot. It's great if you're doing that violin technique like Eddie Van Halen or Ingve. but for the rest of us who are just want to turn it on just play it's a little too loose for me and I've mentioned this before in other videos it just spins too freely and I'm not really into that so if I were to keep this guitar I would probably change that right away. You've got a five-way selector switch a blade switch which is really nice and you've got the typical what they usually use here on Charvel's is the Goto 510 bridge. It's a two-point trem which is nice and uh, there are no locking, there's no locking nut, but we do have locking tuners. Charvel branded locking tuners. Um, I've never had a problem with them. They work fine, so I have no reason to change them whatsoever. Another nice feature with these particular tuners, these tuners are actually staggered, so that kind of allows for a steeper break angle for the strings, or they're just less likely to slip out of the nut slots, which is good. There's also a string tree here. Uh, my guitar had two string trees. I don't like the look of string trees. I kind of wish we could just eliminate them completely. Uh, this is an ash body, caramelized maple neck. I'll say this about the Charvel necks. They're my favorite necks by far. I love them. I say this, I praise them in every video. And as far as I know, pretty much every Charvel model that I've ever seen or tested or played has the exact same neck. So it's kind of the same specs every time around, but we'll go over it again if this is the first time you've seen a Charvel video, uh, I doubt it. But this is a caramelized one piece maple neck, bolt on obviously. And it's got a 12 to 16 inch compound radius on the fretboard side, which is really nice. We've got 22 jumbo frets. These are not stainless steel frets. You don't get stainless steel with Charvel unless you get into their really upper echelon, kind of like USA Select or their custom shop series. So it is what it is. You've got a Graftech XL Tusk Nut, Graftech Tusk XL. I never know which order to say those three things, but you know what I mean. It's got the lubrication kind of impregnated into the material, so it just slides better. The strings are less likely to bind. We love that. Uh, overall, this guitar is really a joy to play. This is a beautiful matte finish, and um, I have to say, though, this matte finish, although it looks really nice, it picks up great on camera, you know, it just looks gorgeous. It does start to shine up over time for wherever you leave your hand or your arm or rub on it frequently or even if, you know, wherever you grab it frequently. It's just going to shine up over time and you really can't eliminate it. You can't get rid of that. Once it's there, it's there. So if that bothers you, you might not want this finish. But it, it doesn't bother me. If you're going to own the guitar forever anyways, it's something you're just going to keep and play a lot. And it kind of shows that worn in look anyhow. I think it's kind of cool. So it's kind of debatable. You know, let me know in the comments if you guys hate that shine, you want the gloss finish, or do you prefer like just open pour? You know, what do you like best? I think the matte looks really good, but like I said, it will shine up over time. So the main issue we're talking about here at the top of the video was that Fender Strats have typically had a couple of major flaws. I'm surprised that they didn't deal with these a lot sooner, but Charvel, which is a Fender owned company, 
and has many of the same features has fixed these issues. So let's get into them. First off, the overly bright, thin sounding bridge pickup. Yes, you know, fender strats typically have the single coil in the bridge and it's always been too thin. It's very difficult to use and get it to sound decent in my opinion, especially for us guys that are playing more metal stuff and heavier stuff. We typically use humbuckers. Secondly though, another issue with the typical fender strat bridge pickup is that it's angled this way with the higher strings being picked up by the magnet closer to the bridge, which makes no sense at all because the higher strings are already too thin sounding. They're already too bright. So why would you make the pickup make them sound more bright and then the bass strings sound more bassy. That doesn't make any sense either. So this guitar fixes that. That's the major issue. That's what I did the thumbnail about. It's angled the other direction. It's brilliant. If you're not gonna go straight, you wanna have that same look, that same kind of angled vibe, this is the one you wanna go with because it just, it makes more sense. The bass strings sound a little thinner and the high strings sound a little warmer, a little fuller because of the angle going this direction. It kind of balances the strings out overall when you just wanna get that balanced clarity in your chord work and stuff like that. It makes total sense. I don't know why Fender itself doesn't adopt this. It's a genius feature, it's so simple. Charvel's been doing it for a while now. And uh, this, yeah, this guitar has been out for a couple of years and you know, it just makes sense, okay? Makes sense, guys. Next, another major issue on Fender Strats is that the tone knob doesn't actuate the bridge pickup. The thinnest pickup, the one that could most use and most be benefited by the tone knob doesn't work it. <laughs> Never made sense to me. There are some exceptions. There are a few guitars out there by Fender that do, but like 99% of them don't. And it just makes no sense. This one of course does. This tone knob works all three pickups. It does work the bridge pickup. So if you need to tone it down a little bit, warm it up, you know, um, it does exactly what you want it to do. Makes sense. Fender, please start doing that a little more often. I know you do it on some models. Do it across the whole line because Everybody wants that, I promise you. Lastly, and this is more of a personal preference for me, but a lot of strats, vintage strats, made Mexico strats, and some of the lower priced models, even now today, still have the six point trim. And if you're familiar with that bridge, it's generally, it's decked. It just lays flat on the body. There's no recessed routing behind the bridge, so you can't pull up on the whammy, you can only dive down. Otherwise, it just lays flat against the body, you know, a la Van Halen, his style. He liked that, he preferred it. Uh, I don't. I like to have the option to pull up if I want to. So it's there if you need it. And the two-point trim just is a lot more fluid, less friction. It goes back in tune where you want it to go when you're done using it. A lot better than the six-point trim. In fact, on my Mexican Strat, which is a 1990, I just keep it slammed, decked, and blocked. Like the thing is locked down because so it won't move because if, whenever I tried to use it, it just would not go back to being in tune when you're done with it. So it was just too much of a hassle. So I, I treat that guitar as if it's a hardtail bridge. This Godot trim, I love this. You know, as far as a non-locking two-point trim, this is my favorite version by far from any brand. It's very nice. You can use it subtly. You can go a little more crazy with it too, but you want to be careful because, you know, the strings can go a little out of tune when they're sliding through the nuts a little bit. They'll slide, but they're not necessarily going to go, about, go back in place exactly where they were before you touched it. This guitar is incredible. Uh, made in Mexico, you know, Charvel, owned by Fender. Fender could take a lot of notes from what they're doing with the Charvel because, you know, it's a more modern take on the Stratocaster. It's still a Strat at the end of the day. It still has the three single coil look to it. It still has the non-locking trim. It's still kind of a vintage inspired, vintage looking instrument. So you get that kind of look on stage or, you know, when you're playing it, but it has some nice modern appointments, most notably the knobs, this nice trim, the locking tuners. Uh, and this neck is just incredible. I rave about it every video whenever I do a Charvel. It has very rolled edges. I think that the new American Ultra 2 series has a similar thing going on where they've had the more heavily rolled fingerboard edges. And if you don't know what that is, you have to pick one of these guitars up. Go to a store, you know, try it out for yourself and see what it feels like. It's so comfortable, it's so rounded here on this edge. It's just not sharp at all. So you can play this thing for hours with no fatigue. It doesn't feel like it's digging into your hand after a while. And if you're somebody who likes to put your thumb over the top for some chord work and stuff, easy, smooth, incredible. Uh, this neck is pretty thin too. It's kind of a, I think they call it a modern C-shaped neck, but it's a thin modern C, but it's not quite the Ibanez Wizard thin. It's not super shredder thin. And the fingerboard is not super flat, which is good too, because the 12 inches up here keeps it comfortable when you want to do your first position chord work. And then as you get up the neck for more of the shreddy lick stuff, it's a little bit flatter, which also helps to facilitate, you know, huge bends without 
uh, fretting out too, which can occur with a more rounded neck. So the 16 inch radius up here, 12 inches back here, you don't see it or feel it. You don't really notice the change because it's very gradual as you go down the neck. It just does what it does kind of behind the scenes to help you to just have a more enjoyable playing experience overall. I love Charvel's guys. I'm talking too fast. I'm highly caffeinated today. It's all right. We'll get there. I promise. We're going to run through some tone samples here in just a minute, but I just want to make sure you guys are fully aware that this guitar fixes what Fender Strats have been doing kind of wrong for so long, at least in my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you guys feel the same way. I do love Fenders, don't get me wrong. I love the Stratocaster, that is the reason I picked up the guitar. I mean, Jimi Hendrix is a god, right? What did he play, Fender Strat? I mean, that's always been the epitome to me of what a guitar, electric guitar is, what rock guitar is. It's the Fender Strat. I'm sorry, that's my school of thought, that's where I came from. So I will always have a love and appreciation for Fenders. This thing is just, it's better. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's better. And it's a little bit cheaper too than the Fender name. So if you have to own one that says Fender on the headstock, by all means, go for it. Have a nice day. Enjoy it. It's a great thing. But if you want to get a little bit extra, a little more high, high um, modernized specs, Charvel. Check out some Charvels. Don't sleep on this. These things are amazing. Uh, one of my favorite instruments is my DK24. And the only real difference is two more frets and uh, it's two humbuckers. That's really the only major differences. So I'm rambling too much. Let's get into some tone samples. Now. We've heard some tone samples. Let me know what you guys think about this guitar. It's been out for a couple of years now, but this is my first chance getting my hands on it. So I'm really appreciative that I was able to, to demo it for you guys. Huge thank you to Zounds, Zounds.com, because they sent this one over for me to check out for you guys. It comes in a couple of different colors as well, but I really love this. I think it's electric blue, they call this color. Beautiful. It's beautiful in person. It's beautiful on camera. Yeah, so of all the features I discussed here that are kind of fixes for Fender issues, uh, which one is your favorite? Which one do you, you know, personally think is the most useful? Let's go over it again. So you've got the angled in the opposite direction, the bridge pickup. You've got the fact that it's a single spaced, single coil spaced humbucker. Did I say that right? <laughs> I never know. That two point trim, it's just like butter. It floats. You can get the flutters, all that good stuff. The humbucker is nice. Uh, personally for me, you know, if I had a choice, I probably would prefer the HSS configuration, but they don't only offer that with the uh, 24 fret, not the 22. I also forgot to mention that Charvel always puts their truss rod here at the heel 
uh, which is really nice access. You don't have to fuss around at the headstock. You don't have to take off a little cover, none of that nonsense. You just stick it in, turn it, you're good to go. So you can make adjustments on the fly in between songs if you have to. You know, you travel around with this thing or the change in climate right now here in the Northeast, it's starting to get really cold and the humidity is starting to drop significantly. I've already turned on my humidifier in the guitar room, so trying to do my best to keep these things in perfect condition, but every once in a while you do have to kind of tweak your truss rod just a little bit. So really quickly, I want to go over some of the measurements. The geometry of the two guitars is a little bit different. This one's a little shorter overall length, and I kind of wanted to understand why, because I thought to myself, well, if it's two less frets, why didn't they just eliminate two frets and leave everything else the same. Charvel didn't do that. There's a lot of measurements here because I was just curious for my own sake to see what were the differences, you know? So I'm going to put a little spreadsheet up on the screen here and just kind of talk through it right now so we can see what the differences are. Here you have the total overall length. Uh, the DK22 is actually three quarters of an inch shorter. Uh, the body length, which I measured from the end of the top horn to the strap button at the back, kind of at an angle, is the same, 18 inches. Uh, the headstock lengths were the same, seven inches. The scale lengths were the same, 25 and a half inches, uh, which I found interesting too. But the fingerboard length on top, the DK22 is three quarters of an inch shorter. And the neck length from the nut to where it first meets the body is three quarters of an inch shorter as well. And this next measurement's a little weird, but I measured from the edge of the fingerboard down to the back of the bridge route. That is three quarters of an inch longer. So the spacing that they have available for the pickups is actually three quarters of an inch longer than it is for the DK24. They basically shifted the pickup area and the bridge all kind of back and the neck as well, just kind of backwards, three quarters of an inch. Yeah, so the guitar is just smaller, size this way overall, a lot more compact, which is nice. And this guitar only weighs 7.36 pounds. So it's a decent, you know, middle of the road weight, but I consider that a little bit lighter. Uh, it feels super light to me, you know, so comfortable to play. The carve outs on these Charvels are always gorgeous, just top rate. The beautiful heel carve that they do, it's one of the best in the business. I love this thing. So the price for this guitar here in the US is currently $1,150 and you get a lot of spec for that. But what's funny is that <laughs> this version, the, the 24 fret version, is actually 50 bucks less. I don't know why, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me, because this actually, if you think about it, because it's three quarters of an inch longer, it's got three quarters of an inch more material to it. So I don't really get that, but it is what it is. So uh, 1149 to be precise is the current MSRP here in the US but you get a lot of bang for your buck. This is one of those guitars that you just keep with you for life. It's just a lifelong workhorse. There's no issues with it. There's nothing you need to swap out with it. Put a fresh set of strings on this thing, set the action how you like it, things ready to rock. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for today. Uh, if you wanna get some more detailed information on this guitar, I've got a link down below to zounds.com. They've got this guitar in stock, comes in several colors. You can't go wrong. This thing's beautiful. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. I'll talk to you soon. I'm out of here. See ya.